Hi, it's Diana Estrada, and I'm here with uh, Daniel Gutierrez, speaker, radio personality, and author of Stepping Into Greatness and Success is Up to You. Welcome, Daniel. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me here. Excellent. So what brings you here to San Francisco? Well, I'm going to be doing a seminar here at San Francisco State and talking to folks about success and how they can have a more powerful year. Okay, excellent. So um, I've been posting on Facebook about leadership and... Um, so one of the questions that I want to ask you is, what makes a true leader? I think there are many things that make a true leader, but one of the most important things is a true leader must be introspective. They must be able to challenge themselves, look themselves in the eyes, and ask themselves, why am I thinking this thought? See, the problem with today's leaders is that they're, they're confused with the way that the globe is changing, the way the earth is changing. There's so many things changing for us. Transformation is happening around the world. And we must begin as leaders, as individuals, to look inside and ask ourselves, why is it I'm thinking that thought? When we challenge ourselves, good leaders can challenge themselves and be open to suggestions of others. Excellent. Wow. Okay, great. And what place, um, something that I'm curious about as I'm exploring my spirituality, is um, spirituality and business. So I want to ask you, what place for you, what place does spirituality have in business? You know, spirituality is everything in business. Now, if, if you look at any of the great books, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, any of, uh, of the great studies done on successful people, I would say, if not all of them, 99% of them were all spiritual somewhere. Whether they believed in God, a higher source, something, they were spiritual. Now, here's the connection between spirituality and business. The truth is that there is a cause and effect going on with spirituality and business. The effect is the connection to yourself, the connection to the God self, the connection to God, and that connection to God is how you get the effect, cause and effect of people, places, things, and money. So when you connect to that source and you understand that source, then the, the, the reward or the cause of the effect is more money, more relationships, and more success. And that is why successful people have spirituality. We're all spiritual beings. It's whether we tap into it or not that gives us the happiness, the love, and the relationships that we're looking for. Excellent. And so what would somebody who is not spiritual and who hasn't, you know, hasn't uh, opened up to that, um, to that realm, like what would somebody who is non-spiritual, non-religious, how, how would they, what would be like a way for them to open up to that? Well, you know, first of all, we're all spiritual because we're spiritual beings. We are designed to be connected to each other, to be connected to something bigger than ourselves. So I think that we're all connected. We may not believe in religion, and I'm not talking about religion. There's a big difference in, in, in organized religion and spirituality. What I'm talking about is that, that need for ourselves to believe in something bigger than us, to believe that there is something. You can call it a doorknob, you can call it God. It doesn't matter what you want to call it. It's important that we identify that spiritual beingness within us and, and grow that. So if you're not there, you're not there. I mean, I can go, it's okay. Do what you got. If it's working for you, stay where you're at. If it's not working for you, you might want to look at something different. Excellent, excellent. That was very deep. So <laughs> great. Um, so another question I want to ask you is, I know that you're very successful and you travel around the world and you do all these uh, speaking, like you're, you know, you flew in here for San Francisco right. to speak to the MBA Stanford, is it? No, it's San Francisco State. San Francisco State um, MBA students. Um, and you're a single father and yes. you have a nine-year-old son, yes. which I love, you know, that you're always posting on Facebook about your son. <laughs> Our pictures. <laughs> your pictures and that now your son is speaking. What would you, um, what? How can you, you know, what message can you share with other parents out there? I mean, I'm a mom of a two-year-old and doing my business. What, what would you, what kind of message would you give to other parents? Pay attention to your kids. I mean, at the end of the day, they, their whole world right now as, as they're growing up is you. Their world that they're developing from the age of, of, of zero to eight is defined by what you teach them. It's that important. From eight to adulthood, they may learn 20% more. So if that 80% is your responsibility, your school didn't screw them up, the society didn't screw them up, it was what happened at home. And so it's important for me to be at home with my son. I travel, as, as you said, around the world. I will fly overnight and not sleep one hour to make sure that I am there for him when I tell him I'm gonna be there. Because it's important, in nine years, he's nine years old, he knows daddy's gonna be at the soccer game, he knows daddy's gonna be at the, at, I, I, I even give an hour every other Monday in his class to so show him I care about his education. 
that's important. It's important that they see that because I, I do believe that at some point they begin to uh, develop a sense of, of identity. They want to be their own person. And at that time, when they're being faced with drugs and they're being faced with, with games, they need to know that dad or mom is there for them. Not You don't go to them at that point and start saying, oh, listen to me, because they're going to go, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You weren't there when, when I needed you. Why would I come to you now? And that's when we get in trouble with our kids because we're not there for them. So we have to make time for them. We have to stop and remember to be present when they're there. They are there with us. They don't go anywhere. We go elsewhere. We're doing business calls. We're doing this. And they're wondering, where's my parent? Where's my And if there's only one, even less. There's not two. Right? So we really got to pay attention to them. Um, and I think that, you know, something that I shared with you not too long ago, our children will, will follow the paths that we thought we covered up. They know what's up. And so we need to pay attention right now so that we can bring up a new generation of children that are, that are confident and that, that, that know that they can go to their parents for whatever it is they need. And the only way that's going to happen is you make them a priority. Excellent. Well, there you have it. So thank you, Daniel. Is there something else you'd like to share? Maybe actually I was asking him earlier about a, a, a great negotiation tip. Actually, if you're open to share. <laughs> she's really, now that. she's really getting me talk. You know what? Here's the deal. Since he's doing, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Since he's doing a prosperity, a 40 days of prosperity, I thought, you know, he would touch on that. So I'm just curious to know if there's well, just one tip, one tip that you can share. Well, you know, I already shared the cause and effect thing, but if you're talking about negotiations, uh, always ask for double than what you want. And, and it's true about everything. And I always tell people, look, uh, everything's negotiable. Nothing is set in standard. Never believe that a person's not gonna deal with you. Uh, if, if something is $100, but you can't afford $100, offer them 25. Let that person make that decision. It is our fact and, the fact and opinion that gets us in trouble. The opinion is what I think that person's gonna think, which I have no business doing. The fact is, you haven't asked. So I always tell people, the fact is, you haven't asked me. People say, well, Dan, I can't afford you. I said, well, you haven't asked. And you haven't, and nothing's for free. So you haven't asked whether I'm willing to participate with you. So the answer is no. Now that's your opinion. The fact is you haven't called me. So when you call me and I say no, at least you know. Right? Excellent. One way or the other, that, that's the way you negotiate. Excellent. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Daniel. And um, thank you very much for listening and stay tuned for more. I know Daniel's going to be doing some big work if you Ooh, just want to mention right. it really quick. No, I'll, I'll wait. Is that a Another interview. Okay, Another interview. Okay. <laughs> yeah, bye.